Yes, guys. Good evening, all. Once again, welcome back to your favorite and my favorite Bio Point Stream the World of Bio. Today we have the very first lecture of 2021 and the last minute revision on the chapter Living World. So hope you are perfectly ready for the session and let's move on with the wonderful session from Living World NCRT Extract. Okay, guys, join fast. So let's move on. Hope you all are here. So once again, reminding you, do not forget to hit the like button. Do share it with your friends. And if you are a new member, do not forget to subscribe to YouTube channel, BioPoint, Stream the World of Bio, and remark us by leaving a comment in the comment section okay guys so let's move with on the yet another super cool super awesome and absolutely amazing session from biopoint in the world of bio on ncrt extract last minute revision of the living world the very first chapter of biology class 11. yes nila yes calvin everyone a very warm good evening once again welcoming you all to this Yet another super awesome session from BioPoint, Stream the World of Bio. And once again, reminding you, if you are a new member, do not forget to join the Telegram group where we conduct the daily polls, questions, OMR exams, and the regular updates on classes. And everyone, once again, welcome back to the first session of 2021. So let's move on with the chapter, Living World. So all of you know about the chapter, very first topics of this chapter is what, as we know, it is uh, what about the characteristics of living organism, characteristics exhibited by living organism. So living organisms exhibit the following characteristics such as growth, reproduction, uh, consciousness, Metabolism, all those are the characteristics that we are going to learn in this chapter. And the very first thing is the growth, right? So growth involves, hope the uh, screen is clear for you all. Guys, are you all here? Guys, are you all here? No one is commenting. Okay, Calvin. So I hope the screen is clear, right? Okay, fine. So growth, it involves the increase in mass and increase in number. So if any, for any quantity, if there is an increase in mass or the increase in their number or their count, we say that it is growing, right? For example, in case of a mountain, what we see, if the mountain grows in height, that is, if the mountain increases its height by accumulation of substances on its surface, then we can say that that mountain is growing. And in case of living or orga other organisms like animals, uh, but the increase in number of the cells or tissues, they together helps in the growth of the organism. And that is what we said to be the growth in case of animals or plants. So, there may be growth from inside the cellular growth is from inside and the accumulation of surfaces that is the growth of this mountains and all are there from outside so therefore we can say that the living organisms show growth from inside but non-living organisms show growth from outside where both living and non-living organisms grow therefore we cannot say that growth is a defining property of living organisms hope it's clear for you the very first part of this chapter Guys, comment me. Comment me right now whether it is perfect or not. Waiting for your replies. Be fast, guys. Be fast. Not waste time. Okay, Shraddha, Calvin, Nila, everyone. Okay, thank you. So, we uh, said about this word, 
the increase in mass and increase in number is referred to as growth and both living and non living organisms grow that is from inside and from outside and what in case of plants we say that the growth is continuous and in case of animals the growth is restricted so in case of plants the growth is continuous and that is known as indeterminate growth indeterminate growth and in case of animals the growth is restricted okay that uh, okay that limited growth is there therefore it is known as determinate growth oh my god clear with that guys determinate and indeterminate growth that is both limited and unlimited growth okay so cell division occurs in certain tissues to replace the cells that is also a means of growth okay guys and uh, what else if we say in case of non living objects the growth is from outside that is by accumulation of met some material on the surface that is in case of mountains the growth is by accumulation of rocks and sands over the mountains right or with the uh, small hills that found finally forms peaks so such a growth by accumulation of material is known as accretion accretion clear with that such a growth by accumulation of some material on their surface is known as accretion so both non living and living organisms grow therefore we cannot say that growth is a defining property of all living organisms clear with that if it is clear give me hearts on the screen give me hearts on the screen and now we have the second topic of reproduction growth is over next is reproduction so as you all know it is a characteristic of all living organisms and what is reproduction it is the ability to give rise to new individual of its own kind guys are you all here i haven't received hearts yet yes shraddha anila calvin okay perfectly fine so ability of an organism or an individual to give rise to new individual of its own kind is what we say to be as reproduction right Uh, ability to give a uh, produce its own kind that is what we say to be as the reproduction and in case of unicellular organisms growth and reproduction are considered the same that is as increase in number that is in case of bacteria amoeba paramecium and certain unicellular algae we can say that the growth and reproduction are considered the same okay so whereas in case of uh what other living organisms like uh what that are mature enough that is mule kidney worker bees infertile human couples they all are they all are organisms living organisms that are unable to reproduce they can't reproduce okay they all are infertile or sterile so and of course what we say is that non living object is capable of reproducing or replicating by itself no non living object is capable of such a method of reproduction so we can say that the reproduction is also not a defining feature of living organism why because certain living organisms too like mule hini worker bees and infertile human couples they cannot reproduce by themselves okay so this is what we say to be uh, this is why we say that reproduction too is not a defining property of living organisms clear with that if it's clear give me thumbs up this time give me thumbs up on the screen guys moving on to the next topic of metabolism what is metabolism this is a term some total of all the biochemical reactions occurring in our body right occurring in vivo in vivo means what occurring in our body okay non living objects no non living object exhibit metabolism metabolic uh, reactions occurring in vitro are considered as living reactions but not living things and what you have to remember is that this metabolism is considered as a living pro uh, defining property of living organisms okay guys yes i got the thumbs up from uh, shraddha calvin and nila hope it's clear for you all and 
okay guys so next property that we are going to move is the consciousness okay so consciousness is uh, what the all organisms are aware of to their surroundings right so such an ability to respond to their environmental external stimuli is known as consciousness okay so we can say that only living organisms show are self conscious or aware of himself or herself so we can say that this consciousness as a defining property of living organism so now come and me till then we have discussed what all are the living prop or the defining properties that we have discussed for uh, living organisms come and me the defining properties of living organisms right now fast waiting for your replies come and me fast Come on, come on. Yes, exactly. I was called uh, consciousness is the one. Consciousness and cellular organization, exactly. But we haven't discussed cellular organization. Okay, that we are going to discuss. I'm going to say that now. Okay, then. Nila consciousness, okay. What about metabolism? Metabolism too is a defining property. Okay, but uh, what we say in case of metabolic reactions, uh, what Guys, Abhis are coming and playing with me right now. That's why right. uh, he is having fun right now. Okay, okay, guys. That's why there is a bit lag in between. He's uh, coming and making me laugh and all those things. Now he is standing beside me. Okay, fine. Yeah, that what we have discussed is about in case of metabolism. Yes, let me read out the chat sections. Metabolism occurs both inside, both outside in vitro and inside our body, and is a kind of living reaction in outside. Exactly, Calvin. Exactly, Calvin. Okay. Uh, what at 9 p.m. Abhisar will be coming uh, live with yet another session from Biopoint, and you may ask this right to him. At that time, I will be coming and disturbing him. Sure. Okay. Fine. So let's move on to the next topic that is uh, what? Reproduction in seasonal breeders, that is plants and animals both are affected by photo period. Okay, so moving on. Okay, moving on to the important topics. So other important characteristics are self-organizing, interacting and self-evolving. That all things, just leave those things. Just leave all those things. And next we are moving on to the topic of biodiversity. Next we are moving on to the topic of biodiversity. Just leave that. Just leave that. Okay, Calvin. Okay. So, biodiversity, if we say about that, it is uh, what we say. It refers to the number and types of organisms present on the earth. So, the variety of organisms and its species living on the earth is what we say to be biodiversity. Number of species. So, the biodiversity or the count of species on the human earth is 1.72 1.8 million 1.7 to 1.8 million okay this is the count of species on the human earth count of species uh, humans on the earth okay so let's move on with the topic of binomial nomenclature binomial nomenclature so before moving on to the topic of binomial nomenclature let's discuss now, what is nomenclature? 
anyone comment me what is the simple word that you can say for nomenclature no i use god it's not buffering i have the device near me and it's uh, perfectly fine working over here and now comment me right now what is uh, yeah exactly calvin naming is the other name for nomenclature nomenclature or naming so why we are naming these organisms because even in every place we are calling different different names for different different uh, organisms or fruits or vegetables if we say about that different different names are used yes radha yes uh, you have got everyone exactly naming is the other name for nomenclature so this idea of naming is put forward by a scientist known as carl linnaeus and this binomial nomenclature is a system of providing scientific names with two components comment me right now comment me right now yes before that uh, what are the two components generic name and the specific epithet so generic name refers to the genus name okay generic name means genus name and specific epithet refers to the species name so comment me right now what is the species name of what is the species name of mango just simple question just make you just revise all those topics come and me fast from the bio, uh, binomial nomenclature we have given us we have uh, what given a specific name to mango from that two parts come and me the specific epithet of mango shraddha once again Yes, exactly, Calvin. Intica. So, what is the scientific name of mango? Exactly by combining the two answers of Shraddha and Calvin, we get that Mangifera Intica, and that is what we say to be the uh, what binom or the scientific name or the biological name of mango. Clear with that? Clear with that? From that, yes, Nila, yes, Shraddha, yes, everyone. Uh, from that, the first uh, word that is the Mangifera refers to generic name or the genus name and the second one indica refers to the specific epithet clear with that clear with that so, so from the scientific name of potato come and me which is the generic name scientific name of potato i need it right now scientific name of potato Come in me fast, fast. Yes. Come on. Come on. Yes, Radha, that is the scientific name, Solanum tuberosum. From that, give me the generic name of potato. Generic name of potato. Nila Calvin Ioscott, where are you? Yes, Radha Solanum. Okay, fine. Perfect. Calvin, generic name, generic name. Okay, so yes, exactly. As before, again combining the two answers of Shraddha and Calvin, we get the scientific name of potato, that is Solanum tuberosum. From that, the very first name, that is Solanum, is the generic name, and the other one, tuberosum, is the specific epithet. Okay, perfectly fine. Clear with the section of binomial nomenclature? Clear with that? Okay then, so let's moving on with this session. So binomial nomenclature, as you all know, it's proposed by uh, Carl Linnaeus and the criteria and principles on which binomial nomenclature of plants is done are provided by two basic institutions, ICBN and IZEZN. ICBN and IZEZN. Come in me right now, which is for 
plants and which is for animals. Comment me right now which is for plants and which is for animals. Fast, fast, fast. We have to complete the entire chapter. Yes, ICBN refers to International Code for Botanical Nomenclature. Exactly, Calvin. And IZEZN refers to International Code for Zoological Nomenclature. Exactly, Nila. Uh, exactly, Calvin Shraddha. Very good. Very good. Okay, then. So let's move on with this session. And uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? And one thing that you have to remember is that Carl Linnaeus belong to which country? Which country does Carl Linnaeus belong to? It's a MCQ question. Ask for the need examination. Which country does Carl Linnaeus belong to? I think the options were uh, France, Germany, Sweden, Holland, etc. So just remember that Carl Linnaeus is a Sweden scientist. Sweden biologist. Okay. Clear with that? It's an MCQ question for the need examination. Okay. Since it is the last minute revision or the LMR, I am moving very slowly with making each and every topic clear. Okay, guys. Hope it's perfectly clear for you all. So, again, moving on with this session. Important rules for binomial nomenclature. Yes, exactly, Nila. Sweden. Important rules for binomial nomenclature. First word in the biological name represents a genus and it should start with a capital letter. Second word in the biological name represents a specific epithet and should start with a small letter. And when handwritten, they should be underlined and when printed, they should be printed in italics. So look this, given Homo sapiens. It's a Latin name. They are usually Latinized. Homo sapiens. They are italics since it is printed. So when handwritten, what you have to write is uh, how you have to write is homo. And the second word sapiens is should be smaller. And you should have separately underlined these two. This is how you have to write the bio, binomial nomenclature or a scientific name. Clear with that? During classification, we use different categories to study the organisms at different level. And these categories are known as taxa. For example, kingdom animalia, phylum chordata, phylum mammalia, class mammalia, okay, not phylum, class mammalia, carnivora, canis, family canis, familiaris, all these things are different categories. And this different categories is known as taxa. Clear with that? Clear with that? So this taxa or categories represents the basic unit or a rank of classification. Represents the rank of classification. Give me hearts on the screen. Give me hearts on the screen right now. Give me hearts on the screen. Fast. Come on, come on. Okay, guys, let's move on with this session and uh, moving on. Next, we have the topic of taxonomy. Taxonomy. Guys, uh, just remember that you all have your exams nearly at the beginning or the second week of July only, May 2021. Okay, May 2021, really. Uh, the second week of July early June there are some other exams I think so there are some other exams so it should will not be conducted in the June okay so you have enough and more times ahead just uh, February uh, January be begin to, uh, January just began only uh, what till July we have almost seven months it just consider six months because right at the beginning of July you will have the exam so six months ahead if you just take at least three months for plus one and three months for plus two classes, 
entirely you could have finished the session right entirely you could have completed all the chapters of physics chemistry and biology right so and soon we will be providing you with some of the best lectures of youtube from physics and chemistry too and a specific time limit will be given for you to watch that i mean specific days will be given for you to watch that so without wasting much time or spending much time on that you may utilize that very uh, best uh, or like that okay so just don't get distracted just focus on your studies and you have almost 6 months which is enough and more for your preparation clear guys so let's move on with the session taxonomy what is taxonomy it is the classification of all living organisms in various taxa so this taxonomy includes four different process like characterization first we should characterize under which an organism belong belong to okay after that we should identify the organism identification after that again classification characterization identification cla uh, classification and finally we will do the nomenclature or the naming clear with that clear with that so to facilitate these process various taxonomical aids are being used which can be classified as ex situ aids like herbaria museum botanical garden taxon zoological parks etc and in situ aids such as taxonomic keys clear with that clear with that let's move on with herbarium first herbarium what happened nila what happened nila calvin shraddha you three are here and nila sent a sad emoji what happened come on come on come on yeah uh what else we were discussing is about herbarium right so herbarium it is a storehouse of collected plant specimens that are dried pressed and preserved on sheets and the uh, very important thing that you have to look is what all are the things included in the label of a herbarium sheet label of a herbarium sheet consists of date place of collection botanical the uh, what botanical name local name and the english name family and the collector's name these are the things included in herbarium okay label included in the label of a herbarium and just remember there is no such a point like height of the plant right there is no such point like height of the plant just remember it is the answer for a previous year neat question the label of a herbarium sheet does not carry information on that was the question okay and the, exactly the option d was this height of the plant and that's what the answer is okay guys so then botanical garden what are these botanical gardens they have a collection of living plants for future reference okay so these plant species in this garden are grown for identification purposes and each plant is labeled indicating its botanical or scientific name along with its family so the famous botanical gardens are the botanical garden at kew in england indian botanical garden at howrah uh in india national botanical research institute at lucknow in india yes yes nila identification uh, classification and nomenclature for a detailed study we have this uh, what characterization just don't be confused with that okay so based on the characteristics we are doing this as identification classification and nomenclature just don't be confused with that just leave those just understand that are the orders if any questions asked from that you must answer without losing any marks clear with that guys hope the screen is clear for you all hope the screen is clear for you all without any blur issue or anything 
confusing bro just wait at the end of this session after discussing some questions little bit questions are there at the end of the session we will discuss that okay so just leave that about this taxonomy just leave this i will explain that once again just leave about this now we are focusing on this taxonomical aids just leave that okay Yeah, Calvin. I know it's too small because uh, uh, they were just taken from our material, one of our material. That's why it is small. Just cooperate with that, okay? That's why, Calvin. And questions? Yeah, it's a bit easy. Just don't worry. Come and do whatever the answers you know without any fail. Okay. So moving on to the topics, then we are moving on to the uh, what? Museum. What are these museum? We have discussed next to the museum, right? So, what is this museum? Museum is a collection of preserved plants and animal specimens for study or reference. Okay, study or reference. So, they have collection of skeletons of animals too. They provide information about the uh, what? Uh, what? Uh, local flora, flora, fauna, etc., but also of other areas too. And plant specimens and animal specimens are preserved as dry specimens in museum. Will you send the PDF of this session? Do you need the PDF, guys? Guys, do you need the PDF? Comment me. Comment me right now. Comment me right now. Okay, surely it will be provided. Surely it will be provided. It will be added in the description box soon after the class ends. Okay, soon after the class ends, it will be uh, added in the description box. Clear yeah, with that. And finally, after some time, it will be posted in the Telegram group too. So, that's all for museum and zoological parks are the places where wild animals are kept in protected environments under human care and which enables us to learn about their food habits and behavior. That's all are about zoological parks and that all are not important until the last minute revision. That's why it is not given here. Clear? Then, while using taxonomic keys, a pair of contrasting characters is being used. That is known as a couplet. The choice made between two statements and that is known as a lead. Clear with that? Clear with that? Hope it's everything is clear till now. Hope everything is clear till now. Hope everything is clear till now. And let's move on with the last part. Is this enough to reading NCRT text? Exactly. exactly. This is NCRT extract. All these are NCRT extract. Okay. Just taken from your own NCRT. Few means for recording. Uh, the descriptions are also helpful in the process of identification of specimens, flora, manuals, monographs, catalogs. In monograph, description of a single taxon is given. All about this flora, fauna, monographs, catalogs, etc. We will learn about after this question discussion. Okay. Systematics include animal diversities and relationship between organisms. And once again, remember this thing. That is a neat question. The order of the book, Systeme Nature is is none other than Carl Linnaeus. And that's all for the last minute revision. And that's all for the last minute revision from this chapter. Clear with that? Clear with that? So now let's have a glance at this. The taxonomic hierarchies. Taxonomic hierarchies. Kingdom, phylum or division. Class, order, family, genus, species. So the basic unit of classification that is the species here and finally ending up in kingdom. So all of you know this and all of you know this. These all are there. Right? So just understand about this species class and that not me. Don't give much stress on that. Okay? Don't give much stress on that. That all are just least important. Just understand what all these things are. Clear? Oh my god. Next, this is some taxonomic categories again given about this genus names, family name, 
order class file and all those things just leave in your way just leave in your way okay this is what we are starting the questions with so now we will cover the entire session entire chapter without any feel clear with that which one of the following aspects is an exclusive characteristics of living organisms comment me the answer whether it is one two three four Perception of events happening in the environment and their memory. Increase in mass by accumulation of material both on surface as well as internally. Isolated metabolic reactions occurring in vitro. Increase in mass from inside. This is important, sir. Which one are your score? Which one are your score? Which one is important? Come with me first. This is important, sir. Which one are your scores? Which one are your scores? Which one is important? Comment me first. Yes, yes, everyone is coming me. I score it. Uh, Shraddha, Nila, everyone is coming me as option one. That is perception of events happening in the environment. So let's check exactly that is the correct answer. Exactly. Very good, guys. Perception of events happening in the environment and their memory is an exclusive characteristic of living things that we have named as consciousness. Clear with that? Last topic. Comment me about the last topic. Table in NCRT. Which one? Uh, whether about those species kingdom or the generic names, family, order. Which one? Yes, yes. Comment me fast. So moving on to the next question without wasting much time. The closely related and morphologically similar sympatric populations but reproductively isolated are known as. Closely related morphologically similar sympatric populations but reproductively isolated are designated as. Come at me fast. Fast, fast. Yes, once again, it's buffering for me. Please wait. Yes, yes, exactly. Sibling species, IOS code also is option two, that is a sibling species rather than they'll be. Okay, fine. Fine, Calvin also says two. Okay, fine. So let's move on with the answers. Exactly, that is the sibling species. So, what is the sympatric, guys? What is referred to as a sympatric? What is the meaning of the term sympatric? Come in me fast. Come in me fast. What is referred to as a sympatric? Okay, guys, same geographical areas. So the plants and animals living in the same geographical areas is known as sympatric. Okay, yes, Nila, that's option two is the answer exactly. Okay, so a group of plants or animals living in the same geographical area is known as what sympatric, only that. Okay, next question taxonomic. Taxon is the uh, unit of taxon is the unit of order taxonomy species genus taxon is the unit of guys is there any echo yes taxonomy is the answer commented by all exactly that is the answer exactly very good that's the answer next question Highest number of species in the world is represented by mosses, algae, lichens, fungi. Come at me fast. One, two, three, or four. Fast, 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 fast. Fungi, fungi, fungi. Oh, exactly. That's the answer. If you all comment that, exactly that's the answer. 
The highest number of species in this world is represented by fungi. The next question on the screen, which one of the following is not a correct statement? Botanical gardens have collection of living plants for reference. A museum has a collection of photographs of plants and animals. Key is a taxonomic aid of uh, taxonomic aid for identification of specimens. Herbarium houses dried, pressed, and preserved plant specimens. Is not a correct statement. Not a correct statement. Not a correct statement. Yes, option two commented by Ayo Scott, Nila. Then others, Shraddha and Calvin, where are you? Comment me the answers very fast. Calvin, two. Ayo Scott gave the reason museum had not orderly photographs. Shraddha, option two. Nila, option two. So let's reveal the answer exactly. Museum have a collection of photographs of plants and animals. It's exactly the wrong answer. Wrong statement. Okay. Next one. Nomenclature is governed by certain universal rules. Which one of the following is contrary to the rules of nomenclature? Nomenclature is governed by certain universal rules. Which one of the following is contrary to the rules of nomenclature? Comment me fast. Fast, fast, fast. The names are written in Latin and are italics. When you have written, uh, the names should be underlined. Biological names can be written in any language. The first word is a, uh, a biological name represents the genus name, and the second is a specific epithet. Option three, option three, option three. Nila, Shredda, Ayos, Scott, Calvin. Yes, exactly. That is the answer. Biological names are Latinized. Clear with that? Next class, right at 9 p.m. today. Today, right at 9 p.m., you have the next class. Okay, on chemical coordination. On chemical coordination and integration. Chemical coordination and integration. Again, last minute super revision. Yes, exactly the question that I have mentioned to you while I was teaching the chapter. The label of a herbarium sheet does not carry information on. If anyone make it wrong, surely you will get nice callings. Date of collection, name of collector, local names, height of the plant. Come at me fast. The label of a herbarium sheet does not carry information on. Nila option 4. Are you sure? Are you sure whether it is option 4 or not? Yes, Calvin, I.O. Scott, Shraddha. Everyone clear? Whether it is option 4 or not, are you all sure about that? Yes, exactly that is the answer. Exactly that is the answer, height of the plant. Yes, that's all for this session. That's all for this session. Hope everything is clear for you. Hope everything is clear for you. Mine too, I.O. Scott. Mine too, I.O. Scott. Every, uh, one of my favorite questions. Okay, because one, it's a very simple question that is also asked for the examination too. That's why. Okay, then guys, not forget to join the next session right at 9 p.m. Uh, on chemical coordination and integration. The last minute super revision of the entire chapter of Living World and the questions are super clear for you. And now you all just remember about the one thing that we have did. For the past few days that is doing mcqs were you all doing the questions that i was posting were you all doing the questions that i was posting the set of questions posted and the finally when finished the entire chapter answer keys are posted were you all doing yeah first step in taxonomy yes nila i will explain Yes, I haven't received any answer. Come on. Yes, okay, fine. Perfectly fine. So, uh, tomorrow early morning, you will receive the questions from Living World. A set of questions and uh, total of 100 questions. You will be received in two sets, 50-50 each. Okay, guys. Okay, now, taxonomy. So, as you all know, the basic unit of classification 
of a taxonomy is what we say to be a rank that is a rank is taxon or category clear with that this is how we begin the topic of taxonomy clear okay then based on certain characteristics all living organisms can be classified into different taxa or taxa is a plural of taxon so that is into different categories so on the basis of different different characteristics like uh, what different characteristics what we say whether in case of structure of cell developmental progress ecological information all those things by constituting our information about all those things we classify organisms into different taxa on the basis of certain characteristics so such an uh, what classification the primary classification based on this character uh, characteristics is known as what characterization clear with that just characterizing the different features of the organism found when we get an organism first we just characterize just i observe its properties that is what refers to as the characteristics and such an observation is referred to as characterization after that we just try to identify the organism after identification what we will do after identification what we will just classify the organism we will just classify the organisms and finally what we will do we will just name it clear with that external and internal both external and internal features both external and internal features that is what we say by the terms of observation okay clear with that nila calvin shraddha io scott everyone nila okay with the confused part Come in me fast. Come in me fast. Your time is going. Your time itself is going. Okay, everyone. Okay, everyone. Thank you for spending your valuable time. And hope this was a super cool lecture. And you all have understood everything very clearly. from this chapter and have practiced some questions and the other questions we will do it in the telegram group okay then guys bye bye see you later at 9 pm abisha will be there and surely once again i am reminding you i will be there to disturb you okay so let's have the josh in the class so everyone do not forget to join and see amil sir's disturbance in the class so it's me signing out from your favorite and my favorite bio point stream the world of bio bye bye Okay bye everyone Calvin Nila Shraddha Io Scott everyone bye Okay ending the session and stay ready by 9 pm okay